Canada thought it was just buying another fighter jet, but what they found was something far more dangerous, a revolution in disguise. For years, Canada had been searching for a replacement to its aging CF-18 fleet. The usual suspects lined up, America's F-35, Europe's Eurofighter Typhoon, even Boeing's Super Hornet. All massive, powerful, and painfully expensive. But somewhere up north, away from the noise of defense politics, one name began to quietly echo through briefing rooms and simulation reports. Gripen. Not the biggest. Not the stealthiest. But something different. Something smarter. Because while everyone else was obsessed with power and price tags, Sweden Saab had built the Gripen E with a different mission to survive in the real world. A world where speed, brains, and adaptability mattered more than pure stealth. And when Canada finally looked closer, it realized this wasn't just another jet. It was an entirely different way of thinking about air power. For decades, superpowers ruled the skies through size and spending. America poured over $1.7 trillion into the F-35 program, the most expensive weapons project in history. It promised invisibility, network dominance, unmatched technology. But behind the glossy pitch decks and the Pentagon headlines, something strange happened. Smaller countries started asking, what if there's a better way? Sweden had already answered that question years ago. During the Cold War, when Soviet bombers could cross the Baltic in minutes, Sweden couldn't afford a giant fleet. It needed something that could take off from highways, refuel in forests, and outsmart a numerically superior enemy. That's where the Gripen philosophy was born, a fighter that thinks like a survivor, not a showpiece. Now, as Canada reviewed its fighter options, it started noticing something the U.S. didn't want to talk about. The Gripen's total life cycle cost was a fraction of the F-35s, its readiness rate was higher, its training system was flexible, and its ability to operate in Arctic and remote conditions, exactly what Canada needed, was unmatched. But at first, no one took it seriously. Gripen, from Sweden, critics scoffed. It's not even stealth. The irony, that's exactly what made it dangerous. When Sweden offered the Gripen E to Canada, it wasn't selling a jet. It was selling independence. No long-term political strings, no dependence on U.S. software keys or maintenance pipelines. Saab promised something radical. Canada would own the jet, fully. It could maintain it, upgrade it, even modify its software, all domestically. No need to beg Washington for permissions. No need to send data across the border. That promise hit a nerve because buried inside the F-35 program's fine print was a truth most people didn't know. F-35 operators don't fully own their jets. Each one constantly reports back to the U.S. through a centralized system, ALIS, now called ODIN, a network that tracks flight data, mission logs, and maintenance schedules. For some, it's a safety feature. For others, it's surveillance. And that's when Canadian defense circles started asking hard questions. Did they want a fleet controlled by their ally, or a fighter they could truly call their own? Then came the turning point. In a series of NATO exercises and data simulations, the Gripen E began to do the impossible, hold its own, and sometimes beat the most advanced fighters in the world. Its electronic warfare system, often called the Invisible Shield, could blind radars, jam targeting systems, and even make the jet appear somewhere it wasn't. It didn't need stealth paint to hide. It hacked the enemy's eyes. Think of it this way. While the F-35 relies on being unseen, the Gripen E relies on making the enemy see the wrong thing. That's psychological warfare at mock speed. In some tests, the Gripen's EW suite was so adaptive, it forced mock opponents to restart their systems mid-exercise. One NATO pilot reportedly called it fighting a ghost. And that's exactly the kind of edge Canada needed in the Arctic. A region where jamming, cyber warfare, and long-range electronic deception are often more decisive than dogfights. The Gripen's hidden strength wasn't just what it carried under its wings. It was how it thought. Every system was designed to talk to the others. Pilots didn't just fly, they commanded an ecosystem. Drones, radars, sensors, and even naval units, all synced in real time. That kind of digital brain power wasn't just rare, it was revolutionary. The Gripen E could land on a 500-meter road, refuel, 
rearm, and be airborne again in under 10 minutes. It could be maintained by a handful of conscripts with a laptop and a toolbox. Compare that to the F-35, which often needs hangars, specialized equipment, and dozens of support crew just to stay operational. While the US built a jet that demanded an empire to sustain it, Sweden built one that could fight even if the empire collapsed. That's not weakness, that's design brilliance. And slowly, Canada began to see it. This wasn't a poor man's fighter, it was a free nation's fighter. Grapen E wasn't asking for billions in infrastructure, nor did it lock you into a foreign dependency web. It gave nations the power to adapt, improvise, and fight on their own terms. In the cold calculus of military strategy, that's priceless. But politics had other plans. In the end, Ottawa leaned toward the F-35, pressured by alliances, interoperability concerns, and the illusion of joining the club. But deep down, defense analysts and pilots knew the truth. Gripen wasn't outclassed. It was too independent to be accepted. Because in a world where defense often means dependence, Sweden had dared to build something too honest. A fighter that made even superpowers uncomfortable. And here's where the irony cuts deep. The Gripen E's most powerful weapon isn't its missile range or radar stealth. It's the idea behind it, the belief that modern warfare doesn't need to be owned by the biggest spender. Every time the Gripen enters a competition, whether in Finland, Brazil, or Canada, it exposes a truth governments hate to admit. That efficiency, intelligence, and sovereignty can outperform bureaucracy and politics. And even though Canada officially chose the F-35, the shadow of the Gripen E lingers in think tanks, air force discussions, and every conversation about what next generation really means. Because the Gripen didn't just challenge a jet, it challenged a mindset. It showed that real power isn't about who spends more, but who adapts faster. Today, as tensions rise across the Arctic and NATO shifts its focus northward, that lesson hits harder than ever. The Gripen E may not dominate the skies in numbers, but it's shaping the future in silence. A silent revolution from a small Nordic nation that refused to think small. Canada may have missed its chance to join that revolution, but the story isn't over. Because when the next conflict tests the limits of expensive stealth and fragile logistics, the world might finally understand what Sweden built all along. Not a fighter jet, a survival machine, an idea too dangerous to ignore. In a sky full of giants, Sweden didn't build the biggest jet, they built the smartest.